this is me. And this guy is chasing me. But little does he know, I have five hidden entrances scattered all around my base. And today I'm going to show you how to make them. And this is how you make five hidden entrances in Minecraft Bedrock. Now, these builds go from easy to hard, meaning no matter what you do, you should find something that you like. So, at number one, the easiest, we have the two by three piston door. It's two blocks wide, three blocks tall, and can be activated from either side. This door can be extremely effective as like a fireplace or just like a feature wall. As long as you don't do what Jeffrey's doing, you should be good. Place. Yes, it's a little bit obvious that there's a button here, but you could make it better for once you press this. As you see, the door opens up. We can walk in through, and after a while, it'll shut behind us again. There's another button on this side. We can stay in our secret base for a little while, or we can go back out. Yep. At number two, we have the Jeb door. Also known as the 2x2 two two flush piston door. Jeb door sounds better. It's completely flush with the wall, making it completely hidden to anyone walking by or staring from a distance. It's very simple and compact with it being practically layout size, depending on whether you count these blocks or not. like a wall of books, a library type of thing. We got ourselves a lectern, but then we got this lever and when we flick it, as you can see, everything's in sync. This door looks amazing. Or we can walk in through, we have our secret base. And then once we're done in here, we can walk it out once again. And we just look at this door. Is it? It's just beautiful. And number three, we have the hidden tree door. And like the name states, the tree itself does not hide. You can come out now. In fact, when you activate, a whole staircase will collapse into the ground. And the fact that it's a tree means you can hide it anywhere. Oh, come on. So here we have ourselves a tree, we have ourselves a floor, and we have ourselves a lever. When we flick this, the tree will go into ground. Now it's not seamless. There is sticky bits in here. There's a piece of target there. There's a piece of wood there. Yeah, it's not the prettiest sight, but look at this. We can head on into a secret base and take a look at this thing's redstone. You'll see this thing's absolutely tiny. It's just awesome. Now at number four, we have a staircase. Not just any staircase, as this one also collapses in on itself. It's three wide, three tall, and the redstone is minuscule. The only reason I put this in at number four instead of number three is because because it uses 20 times the observers and it's just a little bigger. So here we have ourselves a staircase. Now, I'm pretty proud of this staircase. We've got a red carpet and all, but when you flip this lever, I can see the whole thing will pop into the ground. It's so cool looking. You can have yourself a hidden base on this side. Well, here's my secret base. And the best thing about this is you do not have to have a wall here. But when you want to, we can flip this. And I would say this thing is relatively quick. Sure, the little opening could be a tiny bit faster with this bit having to pop up. But take a look at the side of this thing's redstone. You'll see why I love it so much. And finally, at number five, the hardest, we have the hidden waterfall door. Even though I made a whole video about this, I firmly believe it's the king of hidden entrances. It's got a flush door, it's got a step, it's got a waterfall. What more could you want? And you can literally hide this anywhere too, as long as it's not a desert. What? Now for those of you who haven't already seen this, or when we flip this lever, as you can see, the staircases pop up, there's a little waterfall splare. Everything's going on here, but we can walk and through and then here can be our hidden secret entrance base thing When we're done with that we can walk on out and take a look at this thing's rest zone as you can see once again It is very very small for the size like very very small and then we have the tutorials They're all on screen right now So let's go scout go build what you want apart from the hidden waterfall where the tutorial for that is in the description below Now there's a world download for this world in the description too and whilst you're at it, please join my discord there's a build the 2x3 piston door. This is everything you're going to need. As you can see, there's barely anything to it. We've got ourselves a stack of blocks here, but this is decoration blocks and building blocks. This can be whatever blocks you want and suggest you get everything else. So this is the dimensions for everything. As you can see, it's totally eight blocks wide. However, you will need two blocks going north and then also a four 2x2 two two going south. And these six blocks here, this is going to be where the door is closed. So these six blocks here, are the same as these six blocks here. And you're also going to need three blocks of clear space underneath these two door blocks. So the first thing you want to do is come down here and you want to place in a row of blocks covering all of this, just like that. Then place in two, four rest and dust here. 
One resin dust here. Place a block on top of that with a button. This is going to be the button you will press to activate this door. And if you come around to this side, this is going to be the other button that you use to activate this door. You then to place a block here. The rest of the compound going into that block. And the rest of the compound going away. And then now when we press this button, I can see this acts as a pulse extender and should keep the door open for a certain amount of time. And bear in mind, this is your input line as well. So if you don't want to have a button right here and you want to make it more secretive or whatever, you just have to link up a rest of the line straight into this. You now remove these six door blocks here, placing two blocks just like this. Rest on repeat is coming off both of them. A block up, rest on dust, a block up. Rest on torch, a block, more rest on dust, do it to the other side so a block up. Rest on dust, another block up, rest on torch, block, rest on dust. Then placing your six sticky pistons, so three on this side, three on this side. That should make this in the middle, fill up with your door block. And then that is the whole thing done. So you can add yourself a door in and then that's all that's left for you is to decorate this thing however you want. There is so many ways to decorate this, but personally, I think the fireplace door by far looks the best. You would never expect this. So to build the head and jeb door, this is everything you're going to need. Now bear in mind that these are building blocks so they can literally be whatever the block you want. I'm going to be using iron blocks as they look cool. I'm also going to be using sign wall as my redstone block. Now the dimensions for this build is six blocks wide and then three blocks long. And what these two, these four blocks here, these are where the door is closed. So if you come around to here, so as you can see, this is the flush door. So we can open it up, the flush door is right here. Those four iron blocks over there represent these four blocks here. So once you got that in place, you know you are going to need three blocks to blow it and two blocks above this of clear room. So the very first thing you want to do is come to the bottom of this two by two, placing two temporary blocks here and so the sticky pistons facing upwards just like this. And this is going to be the act of the first retraction. So if we come around here, placing three blocks, resting just on top of all of those, we can then temporary activate this Pull this down and you can see that is the first extension and retraction of the bottom blocks. You can then add one more piece of resin dust just to the very end. You then come around to these top blocks over here. There's in two temporary blocks just like that. A sticky piston at the back. A sticky piston here. Now I can destroy these blocks. You then come down a block over here. Placing two blocks on the ceiling and bear in mind you will be able to see this block from the ceiling. So make sure it's a block that looks good. You then place in two pieces of restaurant dust on top of these blocks. And this is going to be your input. So when the story is finished and you want to have the lever somewhere else, this is the rest of the line that you're going to link it to. You can also now come round, get rid of these two blocks, and put them here. And to come round and place a half slab on either side. The rest of the piece is set to three takes on top of them. You can place a block in front of them. A block to the side, destroy this block. Rest and dust on top of this, and make it go straight back into those blocks. So do the same on the other side, so two blocks up, one block to the left, destroy this. Rest and dust, and a block like that. Now this will add as a pulse extender once again, so you can flip this. As you can see, it takes the sticky pistons a little while for them to retract. Then they come around and underneath, place a block here, with a lead sticky piston on it, then place a rest on dust there, bring rats right to this side, block down, sticky piston on this, the rest on dust here. Come round to the front of your door over here, placing a sticky piston facing that way, and a sticky piston facing towards the door just like that. Then come round to the left hand side where you have this rest on sticking out, you're going to place a sticky piston under here, the block of rest on top of it like that. And that should be the whole thing finished. But now we can test it out so we flip this lever. And you can see the whole thing should be flush with the wall. We can unflick it and it will sure will retract. There we go. So you can add in your floor here and of course your wall would be here. So the best way to wire it in is like let's say you wanted your lever to be on this side which I've done for over there. All you would have to do is place a rest on on here. Then you have your lever on here. Like you see, flush with the wall. You can see where it is. But if you want to link up like a hidden input into this thing or a code or whatever you want, this is the rest of the line that you link it to. It's now your turn to decorate this thing however you want and put it wherever you want. So to build the hidden tree door, this is everything you're going to need. As you can see, it's relatively cheap. Now bear in mind that these are my building blocks. That's going to be my redstone block. So I'll just get all of this. And this thing is five blocks wide in total and only three blocks long as well, making this thing extremely small. As you can see, I've already got my tree in place. I recommend you do the same. And you are going to need four blocks of clear room underneath this. So this is your surface level. You're going to need four blocks underneath this. And then get yourself this dimensions in. And then this gold block is exactly where your tree is. But once you've got this thing in shape, when you've got everything dug out, we can start. So you want to come to the front of the door. I bear in mind this is going to be the front. And this side is going to be the back. You're going to come three blocks under this. So one, two, three. Throw these two blocks here. And place a sticky piston facing upwards like that. Destroy this block. 
place a block down here. The rest of them appear to go in this way. Come a block up and come a block up from this other side. And a block down. Place two pieces of resin just like that. That's going to be your input block. So if you want to, you can activate this, take it up and down. Do whatever you want, but just keep it on for now. Then come round over here and place a block. And a double piston extender on top of this. Now this is going to be the double piston extender. If we go up, grab this oak board, bring it back down. And then a different piston beside the oak wood to the side, making it an actual staircase. Then we'll place an iron block to the side of this. Now this is a block that you will be able to see. This will be the floor of your block. As you can see, when this piston is retracted, this will be your staircase going down. Once again, flick this on, just for now. Then coming from this bottom rest and dust, you want to place a block here. There are rest and pieces to three ticks, a temporary block, a dropper, come round to the other side, and then place some rest and dust here. That should make that piston go up. Then we'll place an observer on top of this dropper, observer facing towards your front, and an observer going straight into this extended piston, sticky piston. So that when this thing is retracted, this top piston should retract. Like you see, extend, when we retract it, this pot piston will fire back. Then we'll place in a half slab where this front observer is. Rest on dust on top of that. Some rest on dust here. And the target block here, just like that. That should make that extend. So now when we press this, I can see the whole thing will get retracted into the floor. You can press it again, and it'll just extend. Then we'll come around to the back. You can place a sticky piston here. And all the block that you will be able to see, just under that. While you're back here, you want to place another block to the right from this block. The rest repeat to set that to four ticks. Temporary block here, and observer running straight into this block, the same one that this repeater is running into. We now destroy the block under this, and make ourselves like this little triangle shape. Resting just along all of this, a temporary block here, with a slab on that. Place some more resting dust on top of this, and then two sticky pistons. So one here, as you see, that will be connected to that piston. The one here, which will be here, with one final piston, which is connected to this block. So now when we unactivate this, as you can see, the whole thing should get attracted into the floor. And then our staircase is there. Awesome. You can place another decoration block here. Then now that's all left to do is to add ourselves a floor onto this thing. So now when we flip this lever, as you can see, this whole thing works. <laughs> I put a grass block on top of this by accident. That was my pad. But when we unactivate it, actually everything will slide into the floor just like that. And let's say if you wanted to, you can carry on this staircase going down. Carry on this grass, making this a little bigger. Well, these two blocks here, this is your input. But if you really wanted to, you could have your lever straight on the surface. And to do that, all you'd have to do is replace this slab with some glass. Then you can have your lever up here. But that depends whether or not you want your lever to be hidden or not. I personally like to have a hidden lever. But like I said, you can use this. I mean, this thing's meant to be secret after all. You don't want your friends tumbling by this and just flicking a random lever they see. As trust me, they will. So to build the three wide hidden staircase, this is everything you're going to need. Now bear in mind that these iron blocks here, these are going to be a building blocks, they're for decoration purposes only. These are for my redstone blocks, so this is going to be the blocks that I'm going to use to build the actual redstone circuit. So you can have six of these blocks being chokers, but you have to have at least one glazed terracotta or one obsidian. So as you can see only here, I've got four shulker boxes, but I also have one block here that is a solid block. But once you've got all of this, we can start looking at the dimensions. Now this whole thing is five blocks wide and four blocks long, and this is the first step. Second step, third step. It doesn't have to be in this order that you could have this thing in the middle of a staircase going up, but I just prefer to have it like as the first, so then you don't have to have a weird flat, not flat walkway thing. Yeah, but underneath the ground level, you are going to have three blocks of space, or underneath this first staircase here, you're going to need four blocks of space under this. And then of course, the staircase is directly in center with it being five blocks wide. And the first thing you want to do is get rid of this grass block, it's not needed. You're going to come three blocks under this, so one, two, three. One of low blocks just like that, destroy these two, and then a row of sticky buttons facing upwards just like that. You can then remove all those temporary blocks and place an observer facing towards you this way, which, go, which is then going to go into our observer this way. Place a trap door down here. This will go into another observer with a block straight in front of its face just like this. Now you may as well get all this observer stuff out the way so that we don't have to come back to it and then we have to destroy stuff. It just gets a little bit confusing. Then come round to this side over here, placing a piston like this. Then a piston like this. And you're placing two observers facing goldwards, just like that. You then put three regular pistons directly on top of this. Then once you want to come round to the back, you're going to place an observer this way. So that if we were to place the block directly here, that should flash. You then want to place a, another observer facing towards the front, observer facing this way, with a dropper in front of it, and then get yourself a regular piston and place that here, 
with the one final observer going straight into this normal piston. And then that is the, all the observers you'll need to place. It's just like one solid floor of observers. It's a little crazy. But then you can place in your row of sticky pistons here, on top of this, or directly next to these pistons. Then your row of slime blocks here, just like that. You now get rid of these initial stairs as well. They only come back round to the front over here, placing a block directly on top of this. A rest of them pizza here with a block in front of it. Rest them just here. On this side, you want to place rest them just here. A block to the left. And then rest them just here. And this is going to be your input block. So where your levers are going to go. Then you want to come round to the right. You want to place a block here. A rest room pizza set to 4 6. A block to the right. And then a block down. Rest them just along both of those. Then to come back around to over here where this observer is and this piston is. You put it on piston facing directly downwards just like that. With a rest and torch on top of it. Then to run a 4 to delay repeater straight into this piston. Then you want to place a half slab on top of this formal also piston over here. Then placing a solid block here. Then a rest and torch to the side of this. And that should make all this spasm but honestly it's fine. Now once you get your solid non-sticky block out you want to place it on top of this rest and torch. So this block can either be glazed terracotta, obsidian or any block like that, but it cannot be shulker boxes. And then you want to get the rest of your non-sticky blocks out. Now these can be shulker boxes and you want to place them here, just like that. Or and the same with the other side, just like this. Now we can also test this thing out, so we activate this. As you can see this triple piston extender does work. It takes this slime box all the way to the top. Then we can retract this back into the floor, just like that. And the piston should fire. So now let's say we got our stone bricks out, back out. Put a row of stairs just like this. We can now flick this. The staircases pop up. We can unflick this. They all go down and then these get pushed up. Awesome. Then your floor blocks will be here just like that. Now you could either carry on with your staircase here. So you can have a staircase going up on either side. Like that. Or you can literally just have a wall here. Just like this. It doesn't really matter. But if you were doing this. As you see, you know where these glazed terracotta blocks over here? You would have to extend these blocks up by another two blocks. So these would have to go there if you were having a wall directly next to it. But if you're doing what I did over here, and I have empty space here, you only have to do one on the floor. I'm going to finish up this wall. And as you can see, we flick this, the staircase pops up, we can press it again. The whole thing will go back into the floor. Awesome. And then that is all the tutorials done. Now if you found this video helpful in any way, shape or form, then please do let me know by giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. It means so, so much. And like I said, the hidden waterfall, that's in a different video. Link to the description. Anyways, that's all for me and I'll see you all later. Have fun with your new hidden entrances in Minecraft Bedrock.